we have here the case of Ditiangkin versus Lazada, which discusses the burden imposed upon the employer to prove that its workers are independent contractors. Chris then and several other persons alleged that in February 2016, Lazada e-Services Philippines Inc. or Lazada, a business which claims to facilitate the sale of goods between its sellers and buyers, hired them to work as riders. Chris then and his group were primarily tasked to pick up items from sellers and deliver them to Lazada's warehouse. Each of them signed an independent contractor agreement which states that they will be engaged for one year and pay a service fee. They were to use their privately owned motorcycles in their trips. Chris then and his group narrated that sometime in January 2017, a Lazada dispatcher told them that they have been removed from their usual routes and will no longer be given any schedules. Despite this development, they still went to the office and waited for three days to be given new tasks, but no work schedules came. They soon learned that their routes were already given to other riders. Agreed by the events, Chris Den and his group filed a complaint before the National Labor Relations Commission against Lazada for illegal dismissal, illegal deduction, money claims with claims for moral and exemplary damages, and attorney's fees. Lazada denied that Chris Den and his group were its employees. It maintained that Chris Den and his group were independent contractors and cannot claim back wages, separation pay, and other benefits considering that they are not regular employees. The Office of the Labor Arbiter ruled that no employer-employee relationship existed between Lazada and Chris Den and his group. The Office of the Labor Arbiter found that the respective independent contractor agreements of Chris Den and his group clearly stated that no employer-employee relationship existed between them and Lazada. The said office also determined that Chris Den and his group had control over the means and methods of their work since they provided their own vehicles and were free to choose the means of transport, delivery routes, and working hours. The Office of the Labor Arbiter added that Lazada only required goods to be delivered promptly and in good condition. While the said office acknowledged that Lazada gave out rules and regulations on the delivery of goods, it ruled that this did not amount to control over the means and methods by which Chris Den and his group accomplished their work. Thus, the Office of the Labor Arbiter dismissed the complaint for lack of jurisdiction. On appeal, the National Labor Relations Commission affirmed the Office of the Labor Arbiter's ruling. Chris Den and his group filed a petition with the Court of Appeals, but their petition was dismissed outright. Chris Den and his group then elevated their case to the Supreme Court. Were Chris Den and his group regular employees of Lazada? The Supreme Court ruled in the affirmative. The Court reiterated established principles as follows. Consistent with the constitutional recognition that labor is a primary social economic force, Full protection to labor is a social policy enshrined in Article 13, Section 3 of the Constitution. The provision guarantees the right of workers to security of tenure, among others. One's employment is a property right which cannot be revoked without due process. Under Philippine laws, the nature of employment of a worker is prescribed by law, regardless of what the contract and the parties present it to be. Furthermore, employment contracts are not ordinary contracts because they are imbued with public interest. The applicable provisions of law are deemed incorporated into the contract and the parties cannot exempt themselves from the coverage of labor laws simply by entering into contracts. Thus, regardless of the nomenclature and stipulations of the contract, the employment contract must be read consistent with the social policy of providing protection to labor. The court then stated that to determine the existence of an employer-employee relationship, it employs a two-tiered test, the fourfold test and the economic dependence test. Under the fourfold test, to establish an employer employee relationship, four factors must be proven A. The employer's selection and engagement of the employee, B. The payment of wages, C. The power to dismiss, and D. The power to control the employee's conduct. The power of control is the most significant factor in the fourfold test. The right to control extends not only over the work done, but over the means and methods by which the employee must accomplish the work. The power of control does not have to be actually exercised by the employer. It is sufficient that the employer has a right to wield the power. However, not all rules imposed upon the worker is an indication of control. When rules are intended to serve as general guidelines to accomplish the work, it is not an indicator of control. When the control test is insufficient, the economic realities of the employment are considered to get a comprehensive assessment of the true classification of the worker. The determination of the relationship between employer and employee depends upon the circumstances of the whole economic activity, such as, number one, 
the extent to which the services performed are an integral part of the employer's business. Number two, the extent of the worker's investment in equipment and facilities. Number three, the nature and degree of control exercised by the employer. Number four, the worker's opportunity for profit and loss. Number five, the amount of initiative, skill, and judgment or foresight required for the success of the claimed independent enterprise. Number six, the permanency and duration of the relationship between the worker and the employer. And number seven, the degree of dependency of the worker upon the employer for his continued employment in that line of business. Regarding classifications of employment, the court referred to Article 295 of the Labor Code of the Philippines, which provides four classifications, namely regular, project, seasonal, and casual. Employees who perform activities which are necessary or desirable in the usual business of the employer may be regular, project, or seasonal employees. Of the three, project and seasonal employees are generally engaged to perform tasks which only last for a specific period and duration. Meanwhile, casual employees are those who perform work which are not usually necessary or desirable for the employer's business. The court explained that activities which are considered usually necessary or desirable in the employer's business generally depends on the industry. There must be a reasonable connection between the work performed by the employee and the usual trade or business of the employer. The court mentioned Brent School Inc. v. Zamora as a case which recognized another employment classification referred to as fixed term. Said the court, Fixed term employment is an arrangement wherein an employee is hired for a specific period. In fixed term employment, the work performed may also be necessary or desirable to the usual business of the employer. Fixed term employments are recognized by law for projects with predetermined completion or generally in the work where a fixed term is an essential and natural appurtenance. The court then discussed that in order for fixed term employment to be valid, either of these circumstances must be proven. Number one. The fixed period of employment was knowingly and voluntarily agreed upon by the parties without any force, duress, or improper pressure being brought to bear upon the employee and absent any other circumstances vitiating his consent. Or number two, it satisfactorily appears that the employer and the employee dealt with each other on more or less equal terms with no moral dominance exercised by the former or the latter. These criteria presume that an employee, on account of special skills or market forces, is in a position to make demands upon the prospective employer. The parity of standing between the employer and employee indicates that the employee needs less protection than that of the ordinary worker. In determining whether the fixed-term employment is valid, the burden of proof lies with the employer to show that it deals with the employee in more or less equal terms. The recognition of fixed-term employment in Brent remains an exception rather than the general rule. In the present case, the court declared that Chris Den and his group were regular employees of Lazada. According to the court, Chris Den and his group satisfied the fourfold test. First, Chris Den and his group were directly employed by Lazada as evidenced by the independent contractor agreements they signed. Second, as indicated in the SEND agreement, Chris Den and his group received their salaries from Lazada. Chris Den and his group were paid by Lazada in the amount of 1,200 pesos for each day of service. Third, Lazada had the power to dismiss Chris Den and his group. In their contract, Lazada can immediately terminate the agreement for breach of its material provisions. And fourth, Lazada had control over the means and methods of the performance of the work of Chris Den and his group, as explicitly mentioned in their agreement and as reflected in the way the work of Chris Den and his group was carried out. Lazada required the accomplishment of a route sheet which kept track of the arrival, departure, and unloading time of the items. Chris Den and his group shouldered a penalty of 500 pesos on top of an item's actual value should it get lost. Chris Den and his group were also required to submit trip tickets and incident reports to Lazada. The court added that even if it considered the foregoing factors as mere guidelines, the circumstances of the whole economic activity between Lazada and Chris Den and his group nonetheless confirmed the existence of an employer-employee relationship. Stated otherwise, the court found that Chris Den and his group satisfied the economic dependence test. Although Lazada insisted that the delivery of items was only incidental to its business as it was mainly an online platform where sellers and buyers transact, the court found that the delivery of items by Chris Den and his group was clearly integrated in the services it offered. The court even noticed Lazada's admission that it had different route managers to supervise the delivery of products from the sellers to the buyers. But this only confirmed that Lazada had taken steps to facilitate not only the transaction of the seller and the buyer in the online platform, 
but also the delivery of the items. The court also looked into the contention of Lazada that it could have left the delivery of the goods to the sellers and buyers. However, the court disregarded the said contention as this was not the business model it actually implemented. The court further found that Chris Den and his group were required by Lazada to use their own motor vehicles and other equipment and supplies in the delivery of the items. Moreover, Chris Den and his group were found to have no control over their own profit or loss because they were paid a set daily wage. They were also found to have no control over their own time and they could not offer their service to other companies as Lazada demand their presence from time to time. For the court, Kristen and his group were economically dependent on Lazada for their livelihood and their continued engagement in its line of business. At this point, the court rejected Lazada's assertion that the independent contractor agreements of Kristen and his group explicitly stipulated the absence of employer-employer relationship between them. According to the court, the protection of the law afforded to labor proceeds over the nomenclature and stipulations of the contract. The independent contractor agreements of Kristen and his group were not as ordinary as Lazada purported it to be. Thus, it was patently erroneous for the labor tribunals to reject an employer-employee relationship simply because the independent contractor agreement stipulated the non-existence of the employment relation. The court then rebuffed Lazada's contention that Chris Den and his group were independent contractors. The court set forth relevant principles as follows. An independent contractor is defined as one who carries on a distinct and independent business and undertakes to perform the job, work, or service on its own account and under one's own responsibility according to one's own manner and method, free from the control and direction of the principal in all matters connected with the performance of the work except as to the results thereof. Laws and jurisprudence recognize two types of contractors. Number one, legitimate job contractors under Article 106 of the Labor Code of the Philippines. And number two, independent contractors who possess unique skills and talents and whose contracts are governed by the Civil Code of the Philippines. The court stressed, that when the status of the employment is in dispute, the employer bears the burden to prove that the workers are independent contractors rather than regular employees. In the present case, the court ruled that Lazada failed to establish that Chris Den and his group fell under any of the categories of independent contractors based on the following findings. First, Chris Den and his group were not hired by a contractor or subcontractor as both parties submitted that they were directly engaged by Lazada. And second, the work performed by Chris Den and his group did not require a special skill or talent. Picking up and delivering goods from warehouse to buyers did not call for a specific expertise. There was also no showing that Chris Den and his group were hired due to their unique ability or competency. Finally, the court did not consider Chris Den and his group as regular employees with a fixed-term employment. The court stated that fixed-term employment as enunciated in Brent presupposes an employee who is more or less on equal footing with an employer. It applies only in exceptional cases where the employee has bargaining power on account of a special skill or the market force. In the present case, the court found that Lazada neither demonstrated nor argued this and had even failed to allege as to how the terms and conditions of their contracts were agreed upon. Having been declared as regular employees of Lazada, Chris Den and his group were ordered to be reinstated to their former positions and were awarded back wages. <laughs> 